you might have to eat on your laps because we want to get through the programming. My name is Wilson Lee. I'm the VP of fundraising for the Black Alumni Association. We're happy to have everyone here today. Come inside, please, with your food. Don't be throwing chicken bones at me. And uh, we are live today. We are also on Zoom. So everybody wave to the people at home who couldn't be here. We appreciate y'all, but you will be muted for this event. And maybe we'll open it up for questions later. So again, my name is Wilson Lee. I'm gonna be one of the facilitators this evening. I say one of the facilitators because we are going to be sharing the responsibility. That's gonna be one of the themes for tonight is shared responsibility, collective effort, working together because this is a volunteer organization. Nobody gets paid, but we do get paid in satisfaction, camaraderie and all that good stuff. Um, and I wanna say facilitator because if I say MC, to me that means move the crowd. Nobody wants me wrapping up here, but I can't make any promises. Please come in from outside. We're gonna get this thing started. Please grab your food and come sit down. How many people are here for the first time for a first UBAA event? Yeah, let's welcome those folks, y'all. We're happy to have y'all. We're happy to have y'all. We're happy to have y'all. And how many people are sick of these? I'm just kidding, I'm not. <laughs> nah, we, we love doing these things. It is truly a labor of love. Uh, like we said, it is an all volunteer organization. So it does take a group effort. So we appreciate everyone coming and we'll also appreciate your involvement going forward. Uh, today and tonight what we're gonna go over, we're gonna acknowledge some folks. We have some VIPs here in attendance. So we wanna acknowledge those folks. We wanna kind of bring you up to speed on some of the stuff that we've done in the past, uh, give you a snapshot of kind of where we're at, but then also open this up to where we wanna go in the future. We're gonna open it up for some discussion, for some ideas, things that we like, and things that we wanna see going forward. I'm gonna wait a couple more minutes and uh, we're gonna jump into this thing. Please make it to your seats. We're gonna start the programming. Somebody save me a plate, please. I don't wanna start calling out people by names. <laughs> come on everybody grab a friend come on come on down y'all we want to get this started All right, we're gonna, we're gonna do this. All right, y'all, so, um, you ready? All right, y'all, without further ado, I'm gonna introduce a lady who probably needs no introduction. She is our president. She is a um, virtual, virtual. part, virtual, so. Um, she is not only co-hosting this event tonight, but helping it be streamed. Uh, on the live event or on the online event. So she's doing a lot of things, but that's nothing new for her. So uh, without further ado, I will announce Michelle Johnson, your UBAA president. Hey everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Um, looking out at this crowd, it gives us a lot of encouragement as officers and board. We need to see you guys showing up and we're so excited to have you here today. New people are, are older folks, so thank you for coming. My, again, my name is Michelle Johnson. I'm the president of UCLA Black Alumni. This is my fifth year in the presidency. And I say that because 
we have elections coming up and we need people to step up and take these roles away from Wilson and Maya and me and all of our these people I'm about to introduce. Okay, so this is our officers. And again, Wilson said we are all volunteers. All right, so there's me president. Wilson, raise your hand, is our VP of fundraising. Maya Burrell is our VP of social and community programs. Twee is our membership chair. Where is Twee? Levant is our treasurer keeping the lights on. Where's Levant? Dennis is our legal counsel. Dennis is at the bar. Just kidding. And Van Scott is our scholarship chair. That right there. So that's, that's our officers. And then our board uh, is first uh, Christian Green. Christian is on the is on the Zoom. Hey, Christian. Uh, Sonia Brooks, board member. That's right. Uh, LeBron James, board member. It's okay, y'all can clap. Ken Kenya Yarbrough, Kenya. Brett York, Brett right there. Caprice Willard Bent, where's Caprice? Is Caprice here? Uh, Lisa Roper, Lisa. Kelvin Tolbert, right there in the middle. Uh, Geronimo. Geronimo, where's Geronimo? Is Geronimo here? Okay, Geronimo's not here. Uh, Manla Kaise, Manla. And last but not least, our fearless leader, Mr. Bobby Grace. All right, so we're, we're gonna move right along. It is my pleasure at this time to introduce our esteemed guest. He joined UCLA in 2001 as a professor. Okay, I need folks to take it down take it down. We have a very special guest. Take it down. He joined UCLA in 2001 as professor of sociology and director of the Ralph Bunch Center for African American Studies. He led the Bunch Center from 2001 to 2017 and additionally served as chair of the sociology department from 2015 to 2017 before being named dean of the division of social sciences in the UCLA college. He was recently appointed and now serves as executive Vice Chancellor and Provost Bruin Family, please put your hands together for Mr. Darnell Hunt. Thank you so much, Michelle. How's everybody doing this evening? All right, well, it's really a pleasure to be here among all of these beautiful black people in the room and to talk a little bit about what UCLA is trying to do. Um, so in my role as executive vice chancellor and provost, um, I have the responsibility of trying to sync the operational side of the campus. That is to say, keeping the lights. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Keeping everything going, keeping uh, the students enrolled, keeping things happening on the Hill, um, and also managing our academic mission. You know, what UCLA is as an institution, as the number one public research university in the world, all right? So what that means, of course, is that I meet with all the vice chancellors, all the vice provosts, the deans, and uh, work closely with the chancellor to essentially set the direction of the university. So I just wanted to say that um, we're in the middle of a strategic planning process. I've been in this position for seven months, all right? Been in this position for seven months. We're in the middle of a strategic planning process where we're plotting the path for the university for the next five years, culminating with the 2028 Olympics. Of course, you know, we're, we're gonna be part of the Olympic Village here at UCLA. So we'll be on the world stage again, like in 1984, right? So we're gonna take advantage of that. We're gonna start a new campaign. We're gonna be raising money. This is where you come in, Alumni Association. We're gonna be working with you on that. Um, we're gonna be developing endowed chairs, recruiting more faculty, faculty of color. One of the reasons I took this position is because I wanna continue the uh, path that we've taken over the last few years and really diversifying our faculty. Our black faculty right now are about 5% of our faculty, which is roughly equal to the black share of the California population, but we're gonna push it past that. We made a lot of progress in recent years, if you don't know. We have some amazing, amazing black scholars here on campus that we've taken from some of the best universities in the country. 
and part of my job is keeping them here. The same is true with the uh, students, our student body. For those of you who were here in the 80s or the 90s or the early 2000s, yeah. <laughs> You know, we went through a period after Prop 209 where our numbers went down, and some of us worked together on that. I'm looking at, you know, Bobby Grace and Mandla Kaise and, and others in the room. Um, we pushed hard. We changed the admissions process here, process here at UCLA. We instituted holistic review, which is still in place. I'm happy to report. And we've doubled and almost tripled our Black enrollment since those dark days of the early 2000s. And so right now, all right, give it up. Right. Right now, our undergraduate black student population, again, it's about 5% of the student body, which is, again, roughly equivalent to the state share. Now, LA County, as you know, is almost 10% black. So we have a way to go to catch up with LA County. But we're moving in the right direction. We're gonna keep it going that way. You know, our goal here at UCLA is to be the most impactful university in the world. That's our goal. And the chancellor has kind of stated that. And what I said when I took this position was the way we're going to get there is through inclusive excellence, meaning that you know, excellence and inclusivity, diversity are two sides of the same coin. And we can do that better than anybody else because of where we're located and because of what we've done in the past. If we just think of all the pioneers who've come through here. So again, my job is to make sure that we're hiring the right faculty, that we have the right administrators, um, they all report to me, uh, and, and to hold them accountable. And if they're not meeting the goals, then we have to talk about that when it comes time for reappointment. So um, that's what we're doing here at UCLA. Um, I'm really excited about the future and I definitely wanna work with UBAA because you know our, our black students, our black alumni, the broader community is why we're here. And we're trying to do that for all communities. We're trying to be as inclusive as we can be and to make that a central part of UCLA's culture. So look forward to talking to you all. It's been great and um, I'll be around this evening. All right, we appreciate that, Darnell. I guess if that question was on everybody's mind, is he's going to be an advocate for us? It sounds like it is, so that that's awesome. Um, you know, he has one of those jobs where he kind of has to be everybody's vice chancellor, but we really want him to just be ours. <laughs> I do. Um, so we're going to move along the program. Uh, next up, I'm going to introduce uh, Sonia. She is our community community liaison and Black student graduate advocate, better present. Is it? Okay. She's also, that's the light work though. She's also a, a PhD student right now. And uh, with a, is it a double JD program? Something that you got to spend a lot of more money and time on that I did. Sonia, go ahead, girl. Hi everyone. So good to see all of these beautiful melanated faces in the, e on the, in the, in the room tonight. Um, as some of you know, we have as graduate students have been hit um, quite considerably with a number of different challenges. The most recent one that we experienced was the um, passing of another black woman in STEM, in the STEM department. Um, this was the second, or is the second black woman who has, I hate to say the, the word, but as my counterpart says it, self-transitioned, and you can read into that what you will but it has um, hit us kind of hard and it has been in the, in the STEM department. So I would just like for us to take a moment of silence to honor these two strong, black, beautiful women. Um, and it is important that we come together as a community um, to support not only graduate students, but our undergraduate students as well. So you will also see flyers for a mentorship program that we have that is called Sankofa Kin. And we are pleading with our alumni to be uh, mentors to the graduate students. So can we take a moment of silence for these black women, please? I thank you. Okay, y'all, well, we're gonna move on. Um, so like I said, the theme today is really sort of, again, we're, this, we're all the Alumni Association, right? Um, by the fact that we're here and that we went to UCLA. 
So again, you will hear the reoccurring theme of joint efforts and joint works, because that's really what it takes. It does take a village in this situation. Um, next up, um, I'm introducing Van Scott. He is the president of the Scholarship Association, and he's going to share a few, word, few words with you. Good evening. So just to start off, uh, any legacy scholars, can you stand, wave? I know I, I saw some earlier. Don't be shy. There you go. <clears throat> Just, uh, I'm just going to give you a kind of a little brief history on the scholarship to date, and then we're going to do more of a, uh, a more of a formal ask um, by Ricky shortly. But just so you guys, uh, the scholarship started since 2007 to, to the current freshman class. We provided scholarships to 1,250 students. Yeah, you can give, give it up. Although we have only one here right now. We have about 150 kind of in the fresh first year through fifth year class. So that's uh, we're you know, we're doing doing some good work. That translates into a, we we provided scholarships to about 400 students uh, where we provided them four year scholarships. So some of them in the early stages, they got received $5,000 a year for four years. Then it jumped up to $7,500 a year uh, for four years. And then now we're at $10,000 a year. And, and as you can understand, yeah. As you can understand, the cost of tuition kind of escalated as well. And so it's a whole lot more than it was when I finished here back in 87. Um, so, we have part of our partnership is with UCLA and UCLA through a special program matches those $10,000 scholarships three to one. So our collective effort between what we've raised by people like all of you, and then with this match, it's it equated to about $15.6 million. So this has been an amazing effort and most of the effort has been through receptions Pre-COVID, we were doing receptions at people's homes and people were reaching out to their networks and we're working to raise money. And through that effort, we've raised a lot of money as, you, as, as you've heard. And so some of you are gonna, you, you know, some of you have been talking to already, uh, but we want to kind of continue that effort. And what we're trying to do is to get folks like all of you to commit with your network of, of Bruin alum, Bruin friends, to look at raising money uh, and kind of what I've, in terms of folks I've talked, spoken to tonight, is looking at 10 to $20,000 per person um, per year for five, for five years. So if I get, like I just saw Demetrius, I know her network of folks have been pushing, but if I get Demetrius and her friends to do $20,000 a year for five years, that's $100,000. If I get Wilson and his network to do $20,000 a year, that's another $100,000. And I can go around the room. And so you can kind of multiply that out. We have in our endowed scholarship right now at the California Community Foundation about $1.4 million. So our goal is to kind of get that to $30 million, but that's going to take some work. And so if I don't know you personally, I'd like you to reach out to me today. Uh, so we can connect and we can talk through kind of how you do that with your network of friends. Um, because it's going to take us some effort. And our goal is to get that scholarship to an endowed level that lives well beyond all of us here. And that's the ultimate goal. So that we are providing scholarships to black students in perpetuity. So we have the Winston, UBAA Winston C. Doby Legacy Scholarship, which is our umbrella scholarship which is very focused on our freshmen. We have Lisa Roper, where are you, Lisa? Lisa Roper is now chairing the Leslie Ortique Legacy Scholarship, transfer scholarship. So Leslie was a transfer student and she is now, we're, we're developing a, a, a scholarship for transfer students. We have the Eric White Legacy Scholarship uh, and Eric White, yeah. 
Um, the focus on Eric White's scholarship is on student leadership. And so we're, we're pushing forward with that one as well. We have a new scholarship with engineering students that's very focused on with through the National Society of Black Engineers. So we're working to grow that so it becomes an endowed scholarship. Uh, we have uh, the John Caldwell Legacy Scholarship. We're in the works of pulling that team together. So th that team is coming together. We have the Lacey Wyatt Medical Student Scholarship. And, and Lacey uh, was a, um, a professor in the medical school here, but we have a scholarship now that is just for black medical students. And that's got a group of folks who are working hard to raise money for that scholarship. So our goal is to get all of you to kind of help in those efforts uh, so that we can really grow and provide more scholarships um, forever. So thank you. Thank you, Van. And as a side note, we'll go into this a little bit later as well, but uh, we do have QR codes that you guys can scan at the tables that will take you directly to our um, page at the community count, excuse me, California Community Foundation page. So you can make a donation today, like right now, as soon as you get up. So grab your chicken and then make a donation. All right. Um, I think we have a video coming up. Is that right? Okay. So, and what's the video about? Oh, it's about our scholarships. Duh. All right. Um, are we ready? All right, we're gonna roll the video, y'all. Enjoy. I wanna go into pediatrics, hopefully I become a pediatrician. So that way I could give back to kids. I want to make affordable mobile medical clinics like available to low income students because I feel like growing up, I didn't have as much access. I want to stick to my morals. And a part of that is helping the black community. In high school, I did like journalism. Um, so I wrote for a newspaper about black businesses. I want to be able to reconnect with that. I'm really into like criminology and like forensics. So like if I can apply psychoanalysis and biology to like Crime scene investigation. I think that'll be a lot of fun. I guess the big dream is to like maybe be an FBI agent one day. I hope to work in software engineering and computer science and really improve technology for everyone. Um, so I'm excited to do that in the future. I'm hoping to like create more spaces for Black um, people that want to go into business and then make sure that they have like the resources that they need to become successful. Scholarship means a lot. For a while, uh, my family was doing well financially. And honestly, when that's the case, you don't even know it. And then um, some things changed after COVID and it became really difficult. So getting the scholarship means a lot. Oh, and everything. My sister just graduated from Northwestern. So that whole paying for her college tuition was a lot. And then my siblings both go to private school. So I know that my mom was like really tight on money and I've seen her like struggle to pay off loans. So it's like, and so it really does mean a lot. And knowing that I have to take out very few loans, hopefully, and hopefully that stays that way. Getting this scholarship meant that I can really pursue my studies without worrying about the financial burden. It's having a support system 24 seven. EBAA is always there, so supportive. And I felt like they believed in me and what I can do in the future. And it took the burden off my family. Um, it meant that I can focus just on school, extracurricular, community service. Um, yeah, I'm having a blast <laughs> being able to pursue that. For me, this scholarship honestly has meant everything to me, being able to continue my education. Um, not only like did it help me financially, it kind of just like validated like the trials and tribulations that I went through, like living without, living in public housing. And it kind of just showed me that like, my dedication and perseverance paid off to make my dreams possible. Honestly, it was a deciding factor in where I went to school. I was picking schools based on how much financial aid I was given. So when I heard I got the scholarship, and we immediately knew that UCLA was the place for me. And coming here made me feel like I was so welcomed and invited and just solidified my answer of where I was going.
So um, again, the, the theme here is like working together, right? But not just that, but getting stuff done. So we talked about reversing the impact of Prop 209, right? That's huge. And we're talking about like helping to educate young black people. So, I mean, that's pretty major in my book. Hopefully it is in y'all's too, again, and we need help doing that. Um, so remember chicken, QR code, chicken, QR code. Um, and so, you know, make it easy on these students. I don't know how many people had to work when they were at UCLA. I did. How many people had to work? But not how many people had to really work. Like I work for UCLA catering, okay? <laughs> Parking don't count, all right? The wooden center don't count. If you were studying on your job, you did not. All right, anyway, don't get me started. Don't get me started. Um, so next up, uh, I'd like to introduce a board member, uh, Lisa Roper. She probably worked in parking, but at least hooked me up with a pass or something. Uh, Lisa, come on up. Good evening, everyone. Oh. All right, good evening, good evening. Um, nice to see all these faces here. Yes, I am a board member. And somebody said to me tonight that um, they always see the same people involved with UVAA all the time. This is why we're having this meeting because we want some other people to get involved. I started off as a volunteer, okay? I volunteered because I, you know, UCLA as an undergrad, I had a heart for service and I was involved in service there and I wanted to keep that going. So um, I, I got involved as a volunteer. People like Wilson was on the ski trip committee. I was on that, I was a chair of that committee. Then now Wilson became an officer. I became an officer after being a volunteer. Then now I'm a board member. So you can move on up. You can start off as a volunteer. We need help, no one's getting paid. So the reason why this is the same people is because we're the ones doing the work. So we need more people to do the work, okay? All right, so I have the pleasure of introducing Mr. Ricky Ivey this evening. And you know, I'm of a certain age, I gotta put on my glasses. <laughs> okay, so Ricky Ivey is a founding partner of Ivey, McNeil, Wyatt, Purcell, and Diggs, a practicing litigation attorney and a community leader passionate about diversity and serving others. Since joining IMW in 1980, Mr. Ivey has remained dedicated to building and leading a diverse legal team that excels in providing legal services to the diverse global community. Under his leadership, IMW has grown into a secure and inspiring workplace for all employees. Mr. Ivey serves on several, several boards, but the board he told me this evening that he's most proud of is serving as the chairman of the board for UBAA for over 15 years. And in doing so, he has raised over a million dollars. Okay, so let's hear it from Mr. Ricky Ivey. Come on up. Thank you so much for the introduction. Hello, everybody. Um, it's really, really nice to be here tonight. And I was sitting there reflecting on so many things. One of the things that resonated was that, why, why was I there at the board for so long? Because we were doing the work. <laughs> it's a really, that hasn't, that hasn't changed. When we started, it was early, not, the organization had been going for some time, but it was in and out and in and out. Um, and then, and it was Skip Johnson that came to me, and it was like the late 90s, about look, we really have to get some legs to the UBAA. We really need you to, to step up and, and join because I had been involved back in the 80s. And then we started, we did well, we had our dinner, we had Kareem Abdul Jabbar, we had uh, um, our, our tennis player, Arthur Ashe, we had Johnny Cochran, we had a lot of people to come and support. And then we kind of died down a little bit kind of backed off. So we had to have a rebirth. And so I thought, okay, well, we'll, we'll, we'll take that on. There weren't really any officers at that time. There wasn't really any structure at that time. So together we, 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 we pulled some people uh, together uh, and, uh, and we started, we kind of started over again. 
and, and here we are. And so when uh, uh, it was time for me to transition, I transitioned and uh, by the grace, <laughs> here he is, <laughs> here he is. He was also our president early, early on. And we had Kevin Harbour, we had just folks that, uh, that stepped up, Bruins that stepped up and got real. And you know, when, when 209 was, was enacted and we had the big drop, you know, it was like, oh my God, we lost affirmative action. Because understand affirmative action wasn't just given to Negroes. Negroes fought and died, starting in 1965 and beyond. 55, just go back. We fought for affirmative action. Affirmative action was to shut us up. When we stop fighting, when we stop making noise, not just hurting each other, but we start hurting the system, when we stop that, we lost affirmative action, right? We got soft, we got complacent. And there were those of us that benefited from affirmative action, because no question, you know, I came in through the, through the back door, as they say, with affirmative action, but damn sure went out through the front, okay? All right, but, but that's what affirmative action was about. We fought for that, we earned that. And we messed up and lost it. And we thought, well, well what are we going to do? God damn, we were all messed up, right? <laughs> we had Winston Doby. We had Winston Doby that said, you know what? You know, the hell with that. We can be our own affirmative action. All affirmative action takes is money. We can raise money. We can get money. There's enough of us that have benefited from affirmative action that we're in position to do that. That was his thought, hell of a thought. So he called a few of us together and said, hey, you know what? We need to start Black Alumni Scholarship Program. It needs to be a legacy scholarship program because we've had tremendous Black people that come through UCLA and UCLA has been pivotal it's like Dr. Hunt was saying, in the maturation of black people, from bunch, right? From, from our great basketball teams and beyond. And that's what we did. As a result of that, we had brilliant minds like Bobby and Mamla working with Dr. Hunt, you know, to, to, to uh, uh, change the admission process and the idea of raising this money, which we did, uh, and not just with the just black people. We had uh, the chancellor uh, who stepped up and would, would, could not have happened without him, Young, and then of course later on, uh, Gene. And so we diverted money, and here we are. We're in a position that we can raise money to help our people. The beauty of it was when we started the UBAA, we started as an independent corporation. We didn't trust the university. <laughs> Understand that. We were not about to trust the university. So we started our own independent 501c3. But we couldn't have done that without Chancellor Young because Chancellor Young said, you know what? If you guys are gonna do that, I'll let you use the name. That's where that logo came from. We were legally allowed to use the name. UCLA, it's ours. UCLA Black Alumni belongs to us. That logo and the use of that logo belongs to us because we have permission to do that. Now that's fixed in stone, but it was a chancellor that allowed that to happen. So we gotta give credit where credit is due. Because he was visionary. He said, shoot, if I can get these Negroes raising money, they raise enough money, that's only going to help the university. So why shouldn't I do that? And he was right. He was right. And that's what we did. So I was sitting here again thinking, in my day, we had Winston Doby. And in your day, we got this man right here, Dr. Hunt. So one door closes, another one's opens. And we're seeing that, that, that transition right now. So I am uh, so pleased to see all of you. Uh, 
here and share these, these reflections with you uh, tonight. I had one other mission, two missions. One was to acknowledge the gift of Yvonne Burke, Yvonne Brathwaite Burke. Have you guys heard of her? Fantastic woman. I love her with all my heart. Oh, okay. All right, beautiful. Am I to give this to her? All right, may be my pleasure. This is the Certificate of Appreciation for the Honorable Yvonne Bradway Burke for your donation in the UCLA Black Alumni Association, the Winston C. Doby Legacy Scholarship Fund. You know, <laughs> Yvonne called me because she's always been a contributor. She's one of our early contributors that we would go to. And, and, and she was our, one of our go-to people, right? She's one of those early, early black people at UCLA, early, early. And so Yvonne called me and said, Rick, this is Michelle, you know, every time she calls me, hey, hey Rick, it's a report. She, she always introduces herself, but he calls my name and I know right away it's Yvonne. And she said, you know, you know the scholarship I put together, because she had put together a scholarship uh, from her excess contributions. So when politicians receive contributions, they can use it for a lot of things. A lot of them use it for their trips because they want to go here and there. They use it for other things that somehow benefit themselves. Yvonne said, hey, with her extra money, and she had three quarters of a million dollars, she said, I want to put this together so I can use it uh, to help the students in the second district. But one of the things I want to do is I want to help UCLA. Can you help me do that? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So Yvonne was able to move some of that money to us, which she did regularly. Anyway, she came to the end of it because the funds had been depleted. She, obviously, she's no longer in office, not getting contributions, right? So she said, I got about 100000 left. What do you think I should do? What, what do you think she should do? <laughs> you need to give that to the UCLA Black alumni. That's what you should say. Well, you know, I, would, I think you're right. I'm going to give half. And I said, we'll take half. <laughs> and so, so Yvonne gave us this $50,000 check. And it was, right, Bobby? It's $50,000 check uh, at the beginning of the year. I think we should applaud that. Uh, so there are a lot of OGs out there that are still thinking about their days at UCLA and will think about their days at UCLA, uh, as I will. And one of the things you can do uh, is you can, you, you can buy insurance. You know, a lot of times you see, you hear in the newspaper about people who gave $10 million or $500,000 or a large sum of money. They bought insurance policies when they were young for their alumni. You can do that too. I didn't learn about that till I was older. So I bought the insurance, cost me about 400 bucks a month. Doesn't leave as much as I'd like, but I know that at the end of the day, the university, UCLA black alumni gets six figures whenever I transition, okay? And so you can do that too. It's something to think about. Uh, it's not hard to do at all. The insurance company uh, will, will provide that, uh, that benefit. You just have to be committed to make the, make the monthly contribution. That's all. And as young as you are now, if you start early, it costs you 100 bucks a month. And you can leave a significant amount of money uh, to the university, particularly if you can use it, leave it to the UCLA Black alumni. Okay? So that being said, we are talk about today. I'm not talking about you transitioning. I'm talking about you living for a long, long time. So I think I was supposed to ask. Is that right, Bobby? Okay, I'm gonna get right, I'm gonna get right to that. I, I done buttered you up enough, long enough. No more buttering up. I need to ask, because remember, I'm a lawyer. We know how to ask for money, okay? And also, my uncle was a preacher, Baptist preacher. And you know they know how to ask for money, all right? So I'm gonna ask you tonight for money. Oh, specifically, if I got to go down East Row and have you raise your hand and say you're going to give something, somebody, everybody here tonight is going to give some money. 
promise to give some money because it starts with a commitment, okay? A commitment. Got to be willing to do something for somebody. Got to be willing to do something for more than just yourself. Remember, a closed hand, nothing comes in it. It's only when you open up that you have the blessings, right? Can we get an amen? amen? All right. So now, that being said, before I start pointing my finger at people, tell me who's going to make a commitment tonight. Not later on tonight. Right now. This moment. To give some money. I don't care how, how much it is. Make a commitment. Who is that? I saw a hand right there. Stand up. Stand up. Come on. Stand up. Stand up. Please. Please. Stand up. Stand up. Please. Please. All right. Tell us. What are you prepared to do tonight? Yes. Tell me. On an annual basis, what are you prepared to do? Take a guess. No, no. You don't have to know. Set a goal. Set a goal tonight. Just set a goal. I don't care what it is. $100? $200? $500? $1,000? What is it tonight? What, what can you set as your goal? Now, don't hurt yourself. But as fine as you are, you can do something. Now, I know this. <laughs> I know this. Talk to me now. Now, you can't be mad at me because I'm old school. <laughs> I'm old, I told you that, but I began. <laughs> Talk to me. What, a month? A month? A month? Tonight. No, no. Tonight, we'll take that. What about next month? Huh? Can you, can you commit to that next month? Huh? All right. Okay. Who, who else can I put on? Spot? We got, we got $25 to start us off tonight. Who else can I put on the spot? Talk to me. All right. Now, can we count on you for that for next month? All right. So, so Bobby, I want you to make sure I get this gentleman's name because that's how it goes. That's how it goes. You got to make the commitment. And it doesn't matter how small it is as long as you continue to do it. Because you know what Peanuts used to say? You remember the cartoon, the Peanut, Charlie Brown? You know what he used to say? A lot of a little bit or a lot, right? So if we all do $25, if we all do $75, if we all do $100, as long as we do it on a consistent basis, then we raise money. Then we raise money. Okay? So is anybody else? Anybody else? You want to start the ball rolling? Fifty? Fifty to hundred. Okay, fifty to a hundred. All right. Who do we have back there? Five hundred dollars a year. That's fantastic. I love it. I love it. Who else? Come on now. Come on. Let's keep this going. Come on, Charles. What what you say? What you say, Max? What now? Five hundred. Got it. Okay. Got it. What you say, Max? Oh, shit. Okay. All right. We're moving on up. We're moving on up. We got a thousand up. Somebody match that. Come on now. Come on. Somebody come up. Make the commitment. Make the promise. All right. I got to go get some people. Uh, but, yeah. Okay. Talk, talk to us. What you going to do? Okay. I love it. How you doing? I love it. I love it. All right. So now, anybody else? Before I start going to grab people, come on. Talk, stand up. Stand up and talk to us. All right, Doc. <laughs> that sounds good. That is good. Now, Bob, you getting everybody's name and information. 
All right. Okay. Now, so so you guys really want me to walk back here and get people? You guys want me to do that? Huh? I would have stand up there. Stand up. Make a commitment. All right. We'll let them off the hook. We'll let, we'll let you off the hook tonight. All right. But listen, the point is make the commitment. Think about tonight. Think about it. Do what you can do and don't do it later. Sooner the better. Okay. All right. Thank you all very much. Before Ricky leaves the uh, podium, the altar actually. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we also have a certificate of appreciation for Ricky for everything that you've done for the UCLA Black Alumni Association and uh, your leadership, your visionary leadership, and uh, your willingness to step out and ask people to give because it's, it's hard to ask people to give and you've always been willing to do that. And so we wanted to make sure that you got a certificate of appreciation today too. Thank you, Bob. I appreciate it. So we also want to acknowledge, uh, because Van pointed out that we've been get, uh, collecting money since 2007. And you recall that in, in 2006, there were only 96 black students that were admitted into UCLA. And so within 10 years, we were able to double the number of students that are here. And by the time um, 2020 rolled around, we had already had a couple of years of the most black students who had ever been admitted to UCLA. So we, we came from a long way back, right? And, and not to beat a dead horse, but if everybody in this room makes a commitment to give some money over time, and you don't have to be put on the spot necessarily, but we do have the QR codes, you know how to go and give money. We've had a number of people who have donated over the years, so we wanna make sure that we acknowledge everybody, people that are in the room, people who are not here, all the people that have given since the inception of the Dolby Legacy Scholarship. We wanna thank everybody who's done that. And I also wanna acknowledge before we move on, um, Geronimo, raise your hand. Geronimo is the chairperson of the African Student Union, he's here. A lot of the other ASU staff is here. Raise your hand if the other ASU staff is here. We want to acknowledge the student leadership and uh, we're gonna be acknowledging more people going on. I see all the Deltas here. I see Kappa's here and they're gonna be getting their love in a little bit. We got other uh, Sigma Gamma Rho in the house. We got uh, uh, AKA in the house. So we're gonna be acknowledging people all night and thanks a lot. We're gonna turn it back to Wilson. All right, thanks y'all. Um, how's everyone doing? Hanging in there? So I wanna thank Ricky for making us all a little uncomfortable, <laughs> right? But, but hey, we, we know that you don't grow and you grow out of your comfort zone, right? So I, I appreciate that. Um, I also appreciate Bobby and Ricky for introducing some uh, melanin to this programming because between me, Darnell and Van, it was looking a little bit light. <laughs> And I don't be that comfortable around that many light-skinned dudes. I mean, let's, let's, let's be honest. Nobody wants to see them in groups, okay? I don't. Um, anyways, um, so again, we have some QR codes around. We ask you uh, to scan and make a gift. The other thing that we want you to be um, aware of is there is a, um, a system that we use called double the donation. So for those of you who work for larger employers, there's a high possibility or high probability that your employer might actually match your contribution. So we'll be able to follow up with you on that and help you figure that out. Um, but you know, like me, myself, I'm a small employer. Um, I have a couple of uh, employees. I don't match <laughs> their contributions. <laughs> And, you know, I would never say that, you know, my employees have always gotten paid. I've, I've always, always paid them on time. But sometimes the way my checking and savings is set up, like I might not have the money in the payroll and I had to switch some money up. So I might I had to Venmo them their paycheck or something. OK, so if you've never had to have your paycheck cash app to you, all right, or PayPal to you, there's a good probability that your employer will match your donation. All right, I'm putting my business all out there like that. That's wrong. Um, so I think we have another video coming up. All right, um, here's a video just about UVAA and the stuff that we do. I mean, we do a lot of work, but we have some fun too. And you know, ideally you're doing both, right? So uh, let's roll this bad boy.
Okay, my turn. All right, everybody. So we are moving now into our reimagining part of the program. Um, I'd like Manla to come up here. Where's Manla? Manla's gonna help me do this part. So we're gonna talk a little bit about where we've been and Manla is, is probably the best person to talk about how we started in the history, the key points of our, um, our partnerships, and then I'll come in after you. Hey, good evening, everybody. Um, I won't say too much about uh, you know, where we've been. Ricky covered quite a bit of the history and uh, it really does start with you know, Ricky and a lot of his uh, contemporaries who uh, got UBA off the ground. Uh, personally, as a former president, I appreciate one of the things that Re Ricky mentioned. I appreciate one of the things that Ricky mentioned as far as us starting a 501c3 and deciding to be independent. And I, I want folks to know that it was not easy maintaining that. You know, it was a point in which we were the only organization that had that status, and it was critical in terms of us establishing our scholarship. Uh, I will also uh, say that uh, Bobby hasn't talked about this, but uh, Bobby has committed, um, let me let me do the math right quick, Bobby. Um, I, I think he's coming up on a consecutive 30 years. Consecutive 30 years. You know, I stepped away for a time and came back. You know, uh, Bobby and I came into UCLA together as in, in FSP in 1978. Yeah. <clears throat> And uh, I caught a touch, touchdown pass against the up, upward bound kids from Jordan High School. And when they wanted to rumble, you know, Bobby had my back. So, you know, we've been, we've been, we've been together since then. You're always looking for who's gonna have your back when you're, a, when you're uh, facing a rumble with the kids from Jordan. <laughs> so um, in terms of uh, UBAA, uh, Bobby put in a uh, uh, yeoman's effort keeping the organization alive for about seven years. Uh, in early 2000, we were able to recruit uh, some young dynamic folks in. Uh, I was 40 at that time and I recruited some folks in their uh, 30s, including that young man back there, former president Malcolm Wells. Put in his time as president. Uh, he was followed by a woman who's in the back over there by the name of Jennifer White. always carries her fan club everywhere she goes. In case y'all don't know, uh, Jennifer made sure that in the UBAA, we knew how to get the party started. Because you know, whenever you're building an organization, you gotta be able to get the party started. So Jennifer uh, helped us there. Um, Kevin Harbour is here somewhere, uh, put in some time. Uh, uh, Kelvin Tolbert put in some work. Uh, on the scholarship and the financial front, you know, uh, most of you all know that in some of his professional work, uh, Van Scott always has a collaborative partner in that by the name of Cherie Franklin. I don't know if she's here, but Cherie and Van uh, work together to try to help us get our, our financial piece together. And again, having a scholarship in place really helped with that. Um, Malcolm is also a person who helped us get our finances together. We, we've actually been a pretty well-financed or organization, you know, and that's been very helpful. Oh yeah, our secretary, uh, I mean our treasurer, a treasurer for life. I'm ready. I'm ready to move him up off that spot, but <laughs> but Levant, Levant has put in. We would absolutely be, we would absolutely be a financial mess if it was not for Levant. There's just no question about that. That's just the real, right, right. And Michelle has put in more time than we could ask. And she has really built up uh, our programming. Uh, you know, uh, Lisa talked about volunteering a little bit earlier. I describe her as the all time uh, number one volunteer of UBAA until her record is broken. Give her a round of applause. She's an a all time leader, all time number one volunteer. Um, but I will. Uh, I, I wanted to be brief. I wanted to make sure we shout it out everyone, but I do want to, to talk just really briefly as we talk about reimagining. I want to talk about vision because we do 
need as a community, as an organization, we do need vision. And we did embark when we rebooted the organization in the early 2000s, we did embark on building a powerful organization. And as Ricky talked about, when we were confronted with the admissions crisis, we would not have been able to do what we did if we had not reset our organization, rebuilt our foundation, reinvested uh, people in it. And it, it's paid, for, paid off for us big time, you know, building a foundation. We're at that point now where the effort that we put in 20 some years ago has likely run its course. You know, it's a new world out here and we have to adjust to it and we have to adapt. There are new generations. Uh, I was joking with some of the current students uh, back there and there's a lot of students in between the current students and me who are sick and tired of hearing about the 80s and the 90s, just so y'all know. They don't wanna, they don't wanna hear, they don't wanna hear that ish no more, <laughs> right? Like they heard enough of all of that. And so they're ready to, to uh, create a new day. And so we've got to get younger people involved I did not expect to still be here. I recruited people in their 30s so that I could move on some time ago. So it's time for some new 30-somethings to step up, take hold of the organization, take us to the next level. And uh, the last thing I will say is that all is not right at UCLA right now. It has to be said. You all know that. Uh, I know that. Uh, Sonia talked about the passing of a student that we're mourning. All is not right. We would like things to be better in terms of the climate on the campus. You know, we brought a lot of students back and we launched an immediate campaign called Reclaiming Our University. And the idea was that we would rebuild the climate and the culture at UCLA so that it was welcoming. And that's been challenging because a lot of people really got uh, excited about Prop two, Proposition 209. Everybody wasn't mad. Some people were excited about Proposition 209. Okay, we don't have to listen to them no more, right? Like, races, we don't have to hear about race no more, right? There's some people who feel that way. And so getting the culture and the climate uh, back is a project. Uh, and so my, my last thing is, is uh, let's think in terms of vision. Let's think about where we'd like UCLA to be when it celebrates its next 100, uh, its 200 year uh, anniversary as uh, just recently, a few years back, celebrated this 100 year anniversary. Let's think about where we'd like to see it in the next 100 years. And uh, my last shout out is to someone who spoke already, but I do want us to understand that the numbers that we talked about, the scholarship that we talked about, the legacy of Yolanda Copeland Morgan that we talked about, the rebuilding of the organization, um, our ability to sustain ourselves and build up the scholarship. I just want you all to know that our current executive vice chancellor has been there every step of the way. We have someone that we can believe in and that we can trust in that position. I want you to give another round of applause for Darnell Hunt. He won't, he won't tell you what he did, but there's a little known report. There's a little known report called the Kappa Report, College Access for African-Americans or something like that. Can't remember all the acronym. But when he was in the Bunch Center, that report gave us the data and the argument that we needed to move to holistic admissions and to turn admissions around. And so from that time to today, he has been continuing to invest professionally in UCLA and helping us to get it where it needs to be. We have a person that we can trust in the highest level of leadership at UCLA right now. We need to celebrate that and appreciate that. And when the new crew comes in, uh, the Ashtons and the Sonias and uh, whoever's getting ready to take this job over. Where'd, uh, where'd uh, uh, Geronimo go? You got to take over some stuff when you get a name like Geronimo. You can't you can't sit pat. <laughs> you, you can't sit pat with a name like Geronimo. Your parents did that to you, brother. You got to you got to you got to roll with that now. Uh, Simone Anderson, who is not here, has put in a lot of work um, on behalf of our community. So I'm going to stop there. Uh, Michelle gave me some latitude. Uh, Michelle has done an outstanding job. Uh, you know, um, you know, really as much as anything, uh, making us look really, really good. I mean, sometimes she makes us look a lot better than we are. And anybody who wants to look good when they walk out the house is always appreciating somebody that makes you look better than you are, right? And so she's done a good job really building in our programming, our infrastructure, our operations so that we look good. 
and she has brought on the team, you know, Maya and, and, and Wilson and Twee, who is here. Oh, uh, <laughs> one of my favorite former students in the world, Twee has just always been there doing whatever's needed for the black campus community. She's been a soldier. So um, I'm gonna pass it to Michelle. Thank you all for coming tonight. And let's think in terms of vision. Let's think in terms of where we'd like our children and our children's children and their children's children to be able to come to what we hope to be the greatest, most diverse, most equitable, most attractive university in the world. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Manla. So I'm just gonna do a, a very quick personal, uh, personal plea to you guys. So people in this room, Kelvin, Kevin, uh, uh, Sherry Franklin, these are people who I looked up to when I first came into UBAA. Um, I, I came in just to do a flyer. Who knew? <laughs> Look at us. I came in just to do a flyer. So you that are thinking, well, maybe I have a little bit of time. Maybe I could fit in. Yes, you can. Come in and do something. Start somewhere and build on that. Um, that video that you guys saw, um, when I was putting that video together, I was, I was moved to tears because if you guys understood the work that has gone into this organization trying to get us where we, you know to, to the next level. I am old now. I was, a, I was the young chicken in, in the organization when I first came. And I would irritate everybody because I was all technology and they were like, Michelle, we don't need the technology. Yes, we do. So I'm old now. It's time for someone else to step up. I want to, this can't be done. Come in here, you guys. What the, the work that's been done cannot be done alone. Wilson, Maya, Twee have been instrumental in making this happen. Come on up here. Instrumental in making this happen. All of us have jobs, children, grandchildren. You ain't got no excuse. Uh, Wilson doesn't have any. Wilson's free. Um, and, oh, I'm sorry, Levan, come up here because Levan is next. Levan. So whether he's collecting money, okay. So whether it's ski trip, bringing Angela Davis to campus, common, yes, whatever it is that we've done, you guys can beat it, top it, imagine it. We are taking this time, we're coming up on elections. We are hoping that you guys will step forward, that people will step forward to run and come in and take these spots. You're not gonna be all alone. We gonna be, we still gonna be here. We still gonna be here helping, but we do need to see new faces. So thank you guys. And I wanna give deference to all of our past presidents, all of our past officers. Please give them a round of applause. We could not be here without them first. And with that, the, the money man who makes it all happen is coming forward. Um, oh, we're gonna do a raffle? Oh, okay, let's do a raffle because I, I need to get a slide up. Yeah. All right, y'all, how y'all doing? I'm back. Um, so again, obviously we are standing on the shoulders of people who put in the work before us. And there were people who put in work to make sure that we got into the school and make sure that we got our bus into these seats tonight. And so again, we all know about, you know, what it takes to, um, you know, look out for each other. Uh, what we're going to do now is a little intermission quiz. Okay. On your black, blue, and history. All right. See who was uh, paying attention at your uh, summer, who went to FSP? I didn't get to go to FSP. I went to a Monday orientation, but I was, I'm a hater, huh? I was, I was, I, I, had, a, I had a tough, you see, I like, I worked. So. All right. Um, okay. So who can name the five um, buildings or structures on campus that are named after Black Bruins? All right. I need a hand. I need a hand. Uh, where at? All right, let's go in the back right there. Yes, sir. Bradley building, that's one of them, yes. Author Ash, let's bring it. Lavelle? Bunch? Okay, and anyone else? 
<laughs> Give it up for that man. Uh, come on down, sir. Come grab your uh, your prize. I I love that we have people like that in our in our history, right? Jackie Robinson, Arthur Ashe, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Schools like USC got OJ. You know what I'm saying? Like, like we got to be proud about that stuff. We got to be proud. You know what I'm saying? They still got his jersey on the, at the field. Like, all right, let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. Um, okay. Um, so who was the uh, first alumni, black alumni at UCLA to win a Nobel Peace Prize? Bunch. All right, you got it. You got it. All right. One more, one more. What was the first sorority or fraternity established on campus? Who was it? Delta's in the house. All right, so um, we're almost done, y'all. Hold on in there, hold on in there. We're almost there, y'all. Uh, appreciate you guys being patient. Um, so at this time, I'm gonna call up uh, our treasurer, Levant Wooten, and he's gonna uh, tell us what's up with our money. Levant? And uh, his absence is no indication or reflection of what their finances look like, okay? I just wanna say that. Oh, and we'll be doing another giveaway here in a little bit too, okay? So start Googling. Well, Van Wooden, ladies and gentlemen. You know, for those who know me, um, when I'm taking money, <laughs> everything else waits. <laughs> so the first time they called me, I was taking money, and then they decided to give away some stuff. And that got me a chance to go back there and take some more money. And then they called me back up. So I'm just going to uh, just real quick, just kind of give you some overviews of kind of where we stand financially. I heard the accolades about, uh, I appreciate, you know, people uh, saying nice things about me. I didn't, I didn't do anything. I'm, I'm an engineer, so I just understood numbers. <laughs> and I knew we were in some uh, trouble when I became a treasurer back in 2008. So I think I'm the longest tenured officer yeah. by far. <laughs> um, I'm usually asked, uh, uh, do you want to be president? I say, no. <laughs> I say, can you stay as treasurer? I said, sure, I can do that. So here I am, um, uh, just making sure that um, uh, when you give your donations, it goes where it's supposed to go. When you pay your dues, then you know, um, I, I make sure we're all on point on that. So. Um, I remember when I first came treasurer and asked somebody to pay $50 for membership and they say, you're not gonna spend the money on the ski trip, are you? you know? <laughs> and um, I said, no, the ski trip tends to pay for itself. So <laughs> um, uh, you give money to, I know uh, Ricky, appreci I really appreciate Ricky, known him for a long time. He comes up and talks uh, scholarship uh, from the humble beginnings back in, uh, uh, after Prop 209 and, and then to where we are now, and I'll kind of just throw some numbers out there so you guys got an idea where we are. Um, but, um, you know, I can firmly say that, if, you know, for those who pledge to give money toward a scholarship, we'll go toward the scholarship. <laughs> you know, but uh, there are other things that we do. We do, uh, we, 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 we go back to the high schools, and so um, uh, we do things like this, and, and you know, um, these things are, they, they cost. And so I'm not gonna, I don't think I'm gonna make sure that we're all are, we all should be members. Now, you may not be able to pay, you know, 5,000 or 50,000 or whatever you wanna pay for scholarship, but everybody in this room should have no problem paying $50 for membership. Yeah. Everybody in this room. Yeah. I didn't hear any claps for that. Yeah. <laughs> now, for those who just graduated in the last three years, it's free. You can do to sign up. So, but, but I think we all, in, you know, far enough in our careers, we're fifty dollars a, a, a year, and thank you for those who are life members. Uh, I know Wanda; she's here. She bought a lot of swag, and so I know she's a life member. So I gave her a little swag because she bought so much swag. I, I forgot I was supposed to give some of that stuff away, but that's okay. <laughs> she wanted to buy it. I get. I sold it to her. 
Um, but anyway, uh, this one, I just want to go over. This is um, uh, real quick. I'm going to show you two charts, and then I'm going to get off because people say I talk too much. Um, uh, this is uh, operations income from uh, 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 the last fiscal year, which ended on June 30th. Um, uh, we still give most of our money, but most, most, most money that's, that's donated is still going toward legacy scholarships. Um, uh, but there's also pies that, you know, I think, uh, I think we gave, um, well, I actually had to write it down because it, it, it didn't translate very well. And I thought I had a dais up here, but so excuse me. But just to throw some numbers out, uh, membership, we collect about $8,600 in membership. Now, last I checked, there's some 7,000 or so black Bruins around in the history of UCLA. You do the math. Even, even at $50 times 7,000, I'll take $50 times 700. So, but uh, uh, that's what we raised last year. The, that money goes for things like this, where we can provide some food and drink and, and, um, and, and have you guys come out. You know, it's great that we can start getting together again uh, after two years of not doing much uh, socially, at least together. Um, <clears throat> but we still, you know, there's still um, uh, a lot that comes through donations. So the two of the biggest uh, things that we, that we still give towards is 61% that's toward legacy scholarships. And, uh, and 28 is just regular donations that are not earmarked toward anything. And so when we have our meetings, we tend to, you know, go and look at programming and what the students want on campus. And, you know, if we were all students come with our hands out, so that's, they still doing that. And so, uh, um, uh, there's a little bit of for, for, for board dues for the boards. We, I, I, yeah, I make them pay. And so, um, <clears throat> so I just want to give you guys a flavor. It's about, uh, I think our balances as of um, last month's treasury reports is somewhere like close to $189,000. Um, now, when I became treasurer, and just to give you a perspective, when I became treasurer in 2008, I think it was less than $700 in the account. And, and um, there was a lot of things that the university was on our tails. <laughs> you know, it was a lot of stuff. And so, you know, poor Jennifer, she was my first president. <laughs> but we was working on a shoestring budget. And so uh, I, I, there were some things I said we wasn't going to do. And we we're going to do it this way. And then, um, and then, you know, here we are. So we're pretty healthy financially on that. Um, but I just wanted to give you guys a kind of a flavor on kind of where we stand. That, that, and we're in great graces with the university. Uh, uh, you know, back in 2008, you know, it was it was the evil eye kind of looking at us. But um, uh, you know, and I think Ricky talked on the nonprofit status, and um, and they wanted to take that away. We said uh, no, and you could put the, some words in front of that, but uh, <laughs> it just wasn't happening. And so now we we work in concert on a lot of things, especially towards uh, scholarships. And we're about to go through our cycle for awarding. Uh, probably, I don't know if Van mentioned that or not. It's going to be. I think we're targeting about 25 scholarships this year, the $25,000, $10,000 scholarships. That's just with the legacy scholarships. Uh, if you want to put up the next chart. <clears throat> um, um, these are our scholarship funds with our, our California Community Foundation, uh, which is, which is our, our, our sort of our third party. You know, we still kind of cycle money through the third party. It's a reputable foundation, uh, and then and money's dispensed from that. So uh, in total, that's about $1.4 million for those who do the quick math. Um, but most of it is, is in our legacy scholarship fund. Uh, uh, the Lacey E. Wyatt is the, is the medical scholarship that we started about nine years ago. Uh, we got a group of uh, doctors who, who have really worked very tirelessly to uh, get that fund where it is. Um, we just started this year, or this last year, I should say. Uh, well, what's it? We're in, yeah, we're in March. So last year, uh, a uh, group of engineers, which I'm an engineer, so we started our National Society of Black Engineers scholarships, uh, legacy scholarships, and also for those who knew Leslie Otike, for those who attended the last dinner, I think she was the chair either in 2020 or, and so uh, for those who remember her, uh, she tragically passed away. And so they, they uh, uh, we are in the process of endowing a scholarship for transfer students. So we wanna make sure we take care of transfer students after this freshman. Um, so those are the funds that we have. Um, uh, the, 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 the one thing that we wanted, I, I want to say, uh, and that we really want to get out of in, in terms of scholarships is that, you know, at, at, when, we, I, when we first started, at least from, from what I understand, when we first started with the legacy scholarships, the, the grand idea is to be able to award scholarships to every single African American freshman or transfer student. Every single one. We wanted to come in without having to worry about anything had to do with financing. And so, so that's, and that's, a, and that's a process, you know, so we, we, we have an endowment, the endowment uh, uh, 
it's, it's growing, but I think we kind of calculated some years ago. We may have to re recalibrate that, but we thought if we can get to $25 million, then, then, then the, the, the dividends from that scholarship would be able to pay for every freshman that comes in here and every transfer student. So it's something to kind of think about, you know, and, and every little helps, you know, don't, don't think that, uh, you know, some people can give, you know, 50K, some give, people give 500, some give, people give 50. Uh, I'm not gonna say no to money. So, um, but, uh, but the main, I think the main thing that everybody should come out of here, because this is a general meeting, uh, I think people have mentioned it, that we want to be able to get people involved. You know, I, I, I didn't expect to be treasurer this long. I think someone mentioned they started on the ski trip. That was me. And so uh, someone says, hey, why don't you be treasurer? I said, okay. And then here I am. Uh, I would love to pass the baton. I think we, should, we can get younger. So I'm glad to see some young people here. You know, this, and, and, and you can find your niche. You, know, this, this, you don't have to come in and run the organization. But you know, those who are great at, 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 at social media, you know, we got social media pages. I don't think anybody mentioned that. Uh, this, this fine little piece in there to kind of jump in and, and you get involved. And so, but, um, but if we want to be able to do nothing, you know, there's, there's, there's time, treasure, and talent. And so, uh, you know, if you can give all three, that's great. If you can give two out of three, that works. If you give one out of three, that works. And so, but we all should be, at the end of the day, we should be members. And so I, I really ask you guys, and, and trust me, when you go through the QR code and you become a member, I get the little ding on my phone. So don't, don't act like you're going to be members <laughs> and then work with not doing anything. So, so go ahead and do that. The, the QR codes are around. I'm getting the queue to get out of here. So it's time for me to, I told you, y'all gave me the mic, you know, just, <laughs> and so, uh, but I, I, I appreciate the time and just, just let everybody know what the flavor is. I'm in the back. And so we still got some swag stuff back there <laughs> and I'm going to go park myself back there again. Um, the bling shirts are they're going great because people are wearing them. So, you know, you can get a hold to them now before they run out. So thank you. Thank you, Levant. Thank you for keeping that bridge, man. <laughs> um, all right, y'all. So again, we're moving along. Um, next up, we're gonna kind of hopefully have a little bit of a discussion um, about what we want to do going forward. What are some things that um you think you might want to see and what are some stuff other things that should be on our radar um again this is a collective effort everybody you know uh, inputs their ideas and that's how we get things done so i'm bringing my girl sonia back up hi you guys and keep it real short so ubaa like many organizations is evaluating how we operate we really want to know the best way to serve our membership and if organizational structure fits within a post-pandemic world we are considering how we onboard new alumni and what type of programming and volunteer opportunities our alumni are interested in. As we embark on this new internal study, hint, new internal study, we will conduct surveys to gauge our members' thoughts. We invite all of our alumni, including our current students, especially graduate students, whoop, whoop, to share your ideas with us so that UBAA can best reflect the wishes of our members. Thank you, Tui. Hey, everyone. Hey, all those on social media. So we've been talking about scholarships. We've been talking about what we've been doing. But guess what? We need you. So I'm not going to call you out like they do in church. But if you are not a member, please, please, please consider joining. Because all this, it takes people. That means you. You've graduated from UCLA, you're going to graduate from UCLA. And for those who haven't graduated, guess what? Your membership is free for the first three years. Hey. Hey. And the next level is just what? $50 per year. And you know what? If you're like, mm, let me just do the life membership. Because if it wasn't for Monla, who said tweet, just do the life membership. I was like, um, I'm broke. But when I can, I will, and I did. So for $500, you could become a life member. And then guess what? Every other year, your donations could go towards our scholarship. So I'm between you, food, networking. So QR code in the back, please consider joining. Just join and volunteer, because we need you. Thank you. Thank you, Twee. So um, as y'all have heard us mention a bunch of times by now, this is obviously a volunteer organization. Like I said, we don't get paid in money, but we do get paid in camaraderie and satisfaction because hopefully you will agree that this is some like purposeful stuff. 
Um, but you know, the relationships that we make are super fun. Like we make great friendships, right? And all the relationships don't have to be platonic either. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna keep it real. I mean, look around the room. This is a great looking crowd, right? It's not a bad pond to fish from, I'm just saying. I'm just, so take, it, take from it what you will, okay? The more the merrier, what do they say? Many hands make light work. So that's the cool part is more people join, it's actually less work. And guess what? As more people join, it becomes more fun. All right, because um, we ain't getting paid. So you might as well have fun with it, right? All right, um, so or at least that's what my, my take of it. Uh, I'm about to bring up Bobby. Bobby's gonna do some recognitions. Again, please consider not only joining, but show up for something. Um, and I'm bringing up Bobby. Let's do it, Bobby. So, 1923, Calvin Coolidge was president of the United States, Silent Cal. Also in 1923, four black people were lynched. You know that, that famous sign that the NAACP would put out and it was like a banner and it would say, um, somebody was lynched today. So statistically, uh, they only saying that, that four people got lynched in, 1923, but we know that number was probably much larger. Also in 1923, the Rosewood Massacre. They only state that six black people died in that incident, but we know more upwards, probably about 150 black people lost their lives. That's a little bit of the backdrop of 1923. Also in 1923, separately, there was a group of black women that decided to start an organization at a predominantly white institution. And then a few months later, a black group of black men also de decided to start an organization at a predominantly white institution. Now think about in 1923, the audacity of these two groups to come together to start two separate all black organizations that were supportive of black people in 1923. It's crazy, right? Like you wouldn't, if, if they made a movie about it, you wouldn't believe it, that this happened in 1923. And we're fortunate to have both of those organizations here at UCLA, because both of those organizations were started at UCLA. So Pi chapter of Delta Sigma Theta started in early 1923. And then right behind them in April of 1923, we had Upsilon chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi. So the, the end part of all that is that they have persisted at UCLA for over 100 years. So not just that they started in 1923, but they persisted at a predominantly white institution where they weren't supposed to be there. Because remember, what's the backdrop of 1923? Folks are getting lynched. White people are going into black neighborhoods, killing them in Florida. There wasn't hardly any black folks on the West Coast in 1923. The major, in 1923, majority of black people still live below the Mason-Dixon line. So when you put this thing in context, it's a great accomplishment that these two organizations made. So I'm gonna call up uh, Kenya Yarbrough and I'm gonna call up Kevin Harbour and we're going to present these awards. On behalf of the UCLA Black Alumni Association, first we're going to give uh, an award to Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Pi Chapter in recognition of the significant accomplishment that your organization made in 1923. And then uh, to Kevin Harbour on behalf of Upsilon Chapter UCLA that started uh, chartered in 1923 on the UCLA campus. There you go. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna have first um, 
Kenya and, and Kevin get a photo and then we'll do a, have the folks come down and do a photo op so all the members of the organization can get a quick photo op. Come up for the photo op, please. Are we doing it together or one on one? What do you guys want to do? You guys want to do deltas all together? Let's do the deltas first. As my cosmic twin said, not just the first sorority, not just the first Greek lettered organization, the first student led organization on the campus of UCLA. Then are we going from here to the recognition? Okay. To where I'm just saying that we're fortunate to have Can we have the Kappas come to the stage? All right, big applause again for Delta Sigma Theta, Pi Chapter, Kappa Alpha Psi, Upsilon Chapter. I'd be remiss not to point out that we have Phi Beta Sigma in the house, we have Zeta Phi Beta in the house, we have uh, Sigma Gamma Rho in the house, and of course, the first Alpha Phi Alpha in the house. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Um, so we're about to wind down, folks, if I could get your attention. Uh, we are going to um, recognize um, some um, significant Bruins, Black Bruins, who have done um, some major things over the past year. Um, some of them are here, um, and um, uh, Michelle is going to be playing uh, some of them on the screen, and they're going to roll through. But I know uh, for here today, we have Renee Poole who is president of the Black Women's Physicians. We wanna recognize her. Uh, we also have Stephen King, who is president of the Langston Bar Association. So that's the black, all the black lawyers in Southern California, he's the head of that. We also have here today with us, Brian Williams, who is the deputy mayor of Los Angeles. Brian Williams is in the house. We have uh, Monique Matthews, 
So she just she just did a couple things. She she had the screenplay of uh, this great movie that was on the Hallmark Channel, uh, uh, Holiday in Harlem. Yes, and then she just uh, did her first film at the uh, at the Pan African Film Festival. So we want to shout her out. And then also uh, Mimi is Mimi here. Uh, also, okay, Mimi's in the back. She also had her first premiere of her directed film at the Pan-African Film Festival. So we wanted to shout her out. But um, so these were some Bruins that did some significant things. We wanted to make sure that we shot them out. Also, uh, you probably saw on the screen, Gina prince Bythewood, who did The Woman King and Viola Davis got robbed, but that's okay. <laughs> All right, uh, again, as I said, thank everybody for coming out. Um, we want to, we're going to do some acknowledgments and thank you. And to do that, we're going to bring up our vice president, Maya Burrell. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I do have to, um, if I can get everybody's attention, um, a great Bruin passed away, um, over the, the first part of the year. Uh, those of you that went to school in the eighties, you would know, uh, Greg Foster, who is Olympic champion, um, Great Bruin, uh, world champion, probably number number one or number two in the hurdles for over ten years, um, from the late seventies through the um, the nineteen nineties. So he passed away. So we wanted to make sure that we acknowledge Greg Foster. Okay, everyone. I just want to do some thank yous. Um, so first, I just want to thank everybody who came. It's so nice to see so many of your faces. We miss you. I miss everyone. Like, it's just so great that we're like back in business. Okay. Um, first, I want to acknowledge um, Roots and Vines. If you guys have not visited that table outside, our past president, Jennifer White, is selling wine bottles and it's wine from South Africa. If you guys have not spoken to her about the story of this wine, it's important that you do that. They are going on a trip to South Africa in February of next year, but support her and support this wine because it's supporting the people of South Africa, okay? the women in particular, okay? Um, secondly, I wanna thank the caterers uh, and we've got Silos from LA, they're in Sherman Oaks, if you guys were able to get that. Um, I would also like to thank LP Productions headed by Michelle. And we're talking about virtual and in-person events. That's the woman to see when you have that, okay? Um, I also wanna thank all of our officers and board members for being here and our donors and all of you future members. It's really important that you join. Um, also, a special thank you to the UCLA Alumni Association. And in particular, is Denise Pacheco here somewhere? I don't know. Okay, oh, there she is. Okay, um, thank you so much. She's the director of um, diversity programs and uh, initiatives and she has been so helpful and supportive. So we are really happy to have their support and everything we do. Um, announcements. Guys, you need to look out for several things. First, we are going to have an election later this year. And again, as we stressed before, we need some people to take roles in this uh, association. It is really important. So look out for that. We also, how many of you were at the uh, Alabama State tailgate, the HBCU? Okay. If you were there, you knew it was lit. Okay. People walked by, they were like, what is going on over there? We had hundreds of people out there, a DJ. Folks didn't know what was going on. They just wanted to join. Okay. So all I'm saying is that we also have another HBCU game in September. Okay. We are playing North Carolina Central the weekend of September 16th. So we are already talking to that school and we are going to do a co-hosted event. I'm not sure, I think it's gonna be a Friday party. It's gonna be like a party, okay? So keep an eye out for that. Um, also, we uh, have a member, um, Donna Osby, who has a nephew who is gonna be starring in a film called Sweetwater. And that's opening in theaters April 14th. You can Google it to see the trailer, but um, it's in regards to Nat Sweetwater Clifton, who was the first NBA, African-American NBA player um, and who had a contract. And we may do like a screening or a showing or a group gathering for that. So keep an eye out for that. Um, we also are going to start doing the UBAA ski trip again. And again, if you have not been on this trip, Please sign up to go. I am not a skier, 
but I still go because first of all, you start out on the party bus. The ride up there is like, turn up like nobody's business. And then once you get there, we have a DJ, day parties. It's like a whole weekend of fun. So if you don't ski, it doesn't matter, show up. And then we've got people that do tubing and snowboarding and all that, or just people that just lounge in the lodge, get their drink on, their party on, and still have fun. Okay, so please come to that. And then um, also we have our uh, Winston Doby Legacy Gala, which will be in 2024. And again, we just need committees for all of these activities. If you're a skier, if you like the mountains and mammoth or whatever, sign up for all these things because again, they don't happen unless we have people to do it, okay? Um, and I think that's it. I just wanna say thank you guys. Please, please continue to be involved. It will probably be one of the most fulfilling things you've ever done. It's part of the reason why we're here. And to see that all everything you do goes towards supporting black students so we can keep them here on campus. Um, it's important work, you guys. So just please stay involved. All right, thank you so much. And I'll hand it over to Michelle. Um, I just wanna say Maya forgot to mention, she did the centerpieces, these beautiful decorations. Yeah, she did them on her own. That being said, I'm gonna hand it to Wilson and we're gonna get this cracking with the music and drink. All right, y'all. So if I had to sum up the whole night, I would say we'd be doing stuff. I mean, I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like pick your pick your poison and uh, participate. But that's it. We're hella happy you guys are here. Um, enjoy, eat the rest of this food. I, they, they might be serving drinks yet. I don't know. Don't call me. I think they still are. But uh, more importantly, come back. All right. Thank you guys very much. We appreciate you. And let's boogie. I think we got music. Okay. All right, let's do it. DJ. It's gonna be a party, y'all. And there's more food, y'all. Uh, Please enjoy the food in the now. back. Uh, no doubt now. Please yet. Enjoy the food. Uh, yeah. Check it out now.